have this um, interesting update here from the Ostonia. Uh, oh, well, most things LA adjacent. Let's call it LA adjacent. This is courtesy of the Ostonia. Um, a few people have sent this to me, so pick up everyone that sent this some article to me. That was much much appreciated. Um, it says the following exclusive: Joe Rogan buying the West Theater. So Joe Rogan buying West Austin Theatre for New Comedy Club wants to make Austin a new hub for big laughs. So this is a really big deal. If you remember previously, of course, Joe Rogan moved to Austin recently, obviously, um, in, uh, as a reaction to all the numerous restrictions being put on the hospitality and entertainment industry in the state of California that he was at previously. Um, and the kind of plan was to kind of turn Austin into a beacon, a new hub of comedy and live entertainment and all that good stuff. And maybe this was kind of a natural progression of Joe, especially since he's been touring and going around with Dave Chappelle and doing shows all over America, you know, social distancing ones ones with test whatever it may be um and they're pretty decent productions from what i've seen from afar so maybe that kind of gave him the bug to maybe set up his own thing it might be a response to the com comedy store documentary where he speaks in glowing terms about how important and integral part mitchy shaw played in his career and the career of everybody else that performed at the comedy store and the fact that it's never going to be like that again you know due to you know whatever scandals are but for late some people that are there the fact that california's in the lockdown whatever it may be there's definitely been a switch um in joe rogan's kind of um outlook and approach to how he does with comedy and maybe the fact that he's seen now you know the level that he's at the only way he's able to really give back to comedians especially if they're unable to get his podcast which is probably backed up with guests until maybe two years out um is to maybe have a comedy club where he could just open it up to everybody we can they're probably have gonna have open mic nights during the week uh they're probably gonna have um what's i think called showcases and all that good stuff a whole list of regulars um so it's a great way to kind of give back to something that obviously he feels has contributed a lot to his overall success and of course um maybe give some credence to this idea that there's going to be a new entertainment hub kind of brewing from L in austin texas now it's probably unlikely because you know la has been um the, the heartbeat of entertainment in north america for a long time hundreds of years let's say so it's very unlikely that one pandemic is going to suddenly shift the focus to other places but it might disperse and kind of um you know spread out some of the talent in other places which might be a healthy thing overall for the scene but let's continue so this i think is a club that he purchased itself it said since making his well documented um move from to austin from los angeles multi million dollar podcaster joe rogan has been singing the praise of his new home and making himself right at home so what's next for Rogan and Austin? Um, Austin Tony has confirmed with multiple sources that Rogan is taking the decades of experience of stand-up comedy, first starting in the career in 1988, and finally, drumroll, opening up a very young club in Capital City. Um, though the rumours have also been suggested that he's purchased a now-closed Alma Ritz and a soon-to-be-open Cap City comedy, multiple sources who ask to remain anonymous told Estonia that the new home of Rogan's latest endeavour is the One World Theatre located on 7701 BK Road. The theatre is a convenient 10-minute drive from Rogan 4.4 million dollar Westlake uh, mansion I'm pretty sure he's going to be happy that they mentioned that in the article it continues and um, Rogan will run the theatre with fellow comedian which is a big development here um, Adam Eager who's been on the Joe Rogan podcast experience made a journey from LA to Austin for the gig the one world theatre did not respond for numerous calls and messages from Estonia so that's interesting Adam Eager um, if you're familiar was also um, the co-host to the Mark uh, Mark Norman is it Mark Norman here yeah. Mark Norman whatever his name is norman guy um podcast and obviously um famously if you remember from the comedy store he's now the talent booker there as well um somebody who a lot of people in that store kind of rate especially some of the old timers and some of the newer guys he gives people a chance he's really fairly fair in terms of how he put stuff together so this was something i was curious about when he did mention it a few times whether or not he was going to be you know hands-on rogan in terms of building a comedy club from the ground up or whether or not he'd get someone in to just handle the kind of administrative sort of side of running the whole shebang because it's one thing having a club associated with you or known that you kind of founded it and kind of running it day-to-day -day, i'm assuming could be a bit of a ball lake i'm pretty sure that eager probably has some stories horror ones about running a comedy club day-to-day -day and having to deal with you know comedians and their egos and their insecurities and stuff is probably something that only a certain group of people can do so that definitely makes it known that 
Rogan's definitely taking this seriously, right? Do you know what I mean? He's getting people then who know exactly what they're doing. He flew over, you know, Adam Eager from LA, brought him over to Austin and said, hey, open this club with me, set it up the way you want it, and let's kind of recreate that magic um, in this new place with maybe a fresh approach. So this definitely tells me that they're, they're not ramping around. This isn't some pop-up thing. This is for real, um, which is great to see. It continues, the One World Theatre opened its doors in 1999 when the current owners, um, Hat and Nadi Nadar Stearns, Stearns decided to bring concerts dance fair to call and kids productions to the new venue in association with the equal partner the barton creek arc center the stones acquired 100 percent interest in the property in 27 2007 and have been running it since according to the travis central appraisal district the property is on the second floor closure and likely sustained damages due to the winter storm we know it's been a long time coming for Rigan to finally buy his first club and here so here's what we observed over the years for months now, so yeah, Rogan's been planning to start a club for months now. The latest you got here a sign shortly after the Rogan announced his California exit. Uh, Exodus, sorry, Rogan sat down for an August 2020 podcast with comedian Joe Diaz to talk about the fracking and the effects that it's had on the environment along with the coast and how it was one of the reasons he wanted to leave. In response to his move, Diaz asked Rogan if he plans to do a comedy club once he breaks ground. He said, Most likely, I'm going to do a comedy club in Austin, it'll be for fun for all of us. And of course, um, he's been keeping company with fellow funny. He's got a picture here of Rogan and a few other comedians. Bah, 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 bah. The, uh, the Arcana class has performed at dozens of shows around Austin since he's made his move. Rogan's frequent venues like Stubbs, BBQ, ACL Live and Moody Theatre. Rogan recently appeared in a series of comedy shows alongside fellow comedian Dave Chappelle and also been seen performing with Ron White, Donald Rawlings and Michelle Wolf. Rogan also is coaxing friends like Diaz to follow his path down to Austin. That's not happening. I think he's still in New Jersey. He said he's a long-time staple of the, of the comedy LA store here, the comedy store in LA. So yeah, let's see what happens, man. I mean, he's not looking to make money. I also see the bottom bit here. He's not looking to make money. With the podcast worth upwards of $100 million, Rogan's pockets are lined. Oops, get that off the screen. Uh, lined, uh, aye, aye, aye. Uh, lined um yeah another podcast in the september this time with um white rogan said that he was on the lookout for a ranch and a comedy club in austin rogan said that he wants to help local comics get up and write and get up lo lo local comics um get on the up and up and when he starts a club and also said the idea is to open a club when we open the club i should say is to have these local guys come in pump them up and people know that there is a real scene here and help them not just austin comics but from everywhere bring them into the space and have this club be a hub that's really cool so again because i think he's i think in in other ways this probably wouldn't work if it's like a rich dude who happens to be a comedian opening up a club it's just going to be him kind of performing amongst his friends and getting his friends on stage but i think the way rogan speaks so glowingly about his time at the comedy store the role again i said the bits he played in his career her, her making him irregular and what that did to kind of you know for his legitimacy and kind of making him you know one of the guys and all that malarkey i think he's going to be very aware of the power of that kind of providing that platform for people on the up and cut up as i mentioned in the article so i'm pretty sure this will definitely be a thing that he does for you know for kind of um giving back sakes as opposed to just making money because i'm sure you know most clubs probably don't make that much money anyway in the first place outside of their big night so it's definitely not sort of something you get into as a get get rich quick scene so let's see it continues here that's it yes in the article but yeah um, good news in it for everybody located in austin or i guess comedy comedy fans overall um, especially when life returns back to normal it might inadvertently improve podcasting material and content too for us fans because it's been a bit grim and a bit hard of a slog to listen to some of our favorite comedians or podcasts because i guess they've not been able to scratch that itch of performing so a lot of the people that we kind of generally do enjoy have been quite insufferable during this time i've kind of noticed so this might be a good thing in general that clubs are you know he's approaching a club venues are opening up in la you know you can some people are doing tours bloody blah 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 things are starting to get back to normal so they can go back to doing what they are meant to be doing day to day instead of you know talking to microphones as i am uh, on the podcast or whatnot can sometimes be um great but maybe not the thing that they really want to do so yeah let's see um good news overall good news overall <laughs>